In today's video, we're going to discuss the development of maintenance procedures for customized or non-standard equipment. This is going to be most useful for manufacturing firms that have custom-built or highly modified equipment, for which has no manufacturer's recommendations or industry standard procedures. Building equipment such as package rooftop units, exhaust fans, and, cent and centrifugal pumps have maintenance procedures that are recommended by their manufacturers and a lot of industry experience to serve as guidelines for not only the specific maintenance tasks, but for their frequencies as well. But what if you have a customized piece of equipment, perhaps something that is used in your manufacturing process that is made specifically for your application, or equipment that has been significantly modified to meet your needs, and there are no manufacturer's recommendations or industry standard recommended practices for maintaining it? There is a way to develop comprehensive, effective maintenance pr procedures for this equipment, that also meet your needs, experience, and risk toler tolerance levels. The process I'm referring to is known as Failure Modes and Effects Analysis, or FMEA. This tool, which is described in the book Reliability Centered Maintenance, second edition by John Moubray, is the, is the method that we recommend and utilize with our clients to help them develop maintenance procedures for their equipment. To be most effective, an impartial facilitator should moderate the process. This person asks the questions and prompts the discussion and get the participants to th start thinking deeply about each component of the machine that may result in failure. The participants in this discussion should be include representatives from a variety of perspectives that can help analyze the equipment and provide the most comprehensive analysis of its operation and potential failures. This team usually consists of representatives from the maintenance staff that works on and repairs the equipment, operation staff that runs the equipment, and frontline management staff that may have visibility into how the function of the equipment may impact other portions of the operation. Conducting an FMEA usually takes place in person, but it can be conducted virtually for groups that can't meet um, or, or where it's not practical to meet all, or all gather in the same place. The facilitator then, leads, facilitator then leads the discussion by focusing on one component after another and performing an FMEA with the team members sharing their experience to answer the questions as shown on the top row of the spreadsheet. For each component of the equipment, the function of that, of that component is defined. As you can see here, you see the component listed right here and its function. And then the uh, functional failure, in this case, uh, fails to move, is, is identified. The failure mode or cause of failure is then identified here, and there may be more than one. If there's more than one, we're going to create a separate FMEA line, line items for each one of those failure modes. The effect of that failure is then listed here. In this case, the machine is down. From there, we're going to look at these gratings right here. Each one of these grading criteria is used to determine how severe, in this case, the uh, how serious the failure is. In this one right here, it's the probability of that failure to occur. This column is going to uh, grade the detection or the risk of not detecting it in the future. Each one of these factors goes into calculating this right here, which is the RPN or risk priority number. This is important because it tells you how risky it is or how, how severe um, this particular failure mode is in the overall operation of that machine. Next, we're going to look at the consequence of evaluation. In each of these categories, we're going to, we're going to ask the team um, the following questions. Is the failure mode, in effect, hidden? In other words, can it be readily detected, yes or no? Next, is the failure mode, in effect, safety related? This is important, obviously, for, for safety reasons. Third one is um, for environment, environmental impacts. Will the failure mode have an environmental impact? And lastly, will the failure affect operations? Each one of these gets a yes or no answer. Next, we go into the detection method. How is this failure determined or detected? As you can see from this spreadsheet, most of them are visual. Some are auditory. Um, let me scroll down here. But you would enter that uh, detection method here. And then we're going to look at these criteria for grading the next uh, several questions. Um, is a task 
to detect whether the failure uh, occurring is technically feasible and worth doing? This is an important question because um, it may be that a uh, specific failure mode uh, or the ability to detect a failure mode is not technically feasible or worth doing if it, if it is a component that's buried deep within the machine, it may not be feasible to do that. Likewise, um, is a schedule restoration for PM tasks to reduce the failure rate technically feasible and worth doing? In other words, if we were to schedule a PM to go in and service, for instance, a, a hidden belt um, periodically, would that make a difference? Yes or no? Um, is a scheduled discard task to reduce the failure technically feasible? Uh, for instance, if it, if there was a bearing, would it make sense to go in and replace that bearing regardless of whether it's failed or not on a periodic basis to prevent the occurrence of a future failure? Um, and then there's some other default actions here. Um, is a failure finding task to detect the nature of the failure technically feasible and worth doing? These are, if you'll notice that each one of these has a code next to them, H1, S1, uh, O1, and N1. These all correspond to a decision tree um, that can be discussed in more detail during an FMEA. But it basically brings you through a decision making process on each one of those criteria. I'm going to head back to the FMEA chart. And then we're going to get into recommended actions. So we've decided we we figured out what the failure mode is. We figured out what the effect is. We've talked about the criteria on grading, how severe, and and so forth. Each one of those are. Now we've talked about detection, how we find out how the uh, the failure occurred, and lastly we're going to go into recommended actions. And here we're going to discuss you know what can be done specifically to that component to uh, address it, and also on what interval. This is a discussion that has to take place for every single component, and it has to be a collaborative effort. Um, it may be that the maintenance people would say, um, geez, we really re need to do that every six months. Um, and then the operations people say, well, we can't shut down every six months. We can only do it once a year because of X, Y, Z reason. And you have to come to some sort of um, consensus on, on that frequency as well as the action. And we need to determine who is going to do the work. Is this something that the operations people can do, as in this case right here? Or is it a maintenance function or perhaps somebody else? Maybe a contractor has to come in and, and uh, you know, calibrate something or some, uh, some other component. Um, now we're going to go back and we're going to take the same criteria that we looked at over here, and we're going to reevaluate the, the severity, occurrence, and detection after we've done these tasks. So in other words, if we've, produced, if we've accomplished these recommended actions and we come back to look at these uh, criteria again, what's changed? Have we, have we uh, reduced the severity of it? Have we reduced the chance of the occurrence? And have we, have we uh, changed the level of detection in any way? And now we're gonna get a new score here. So by comparing this score to this score, we hopefully have uh, reduced this number and made this uh, less of a, a problem um, by virtue of the actions that we've taken. So we're gonna do that for all the components throughout the piece of equipment. And this is gonna vary by piece of equipment or, or machinery. And uh, it is a fairly, um, it can be a time consuming process if the machinery is complex, but it didn't, it's, it's done, pretty much it's done once. Um, down the road, uh, you can go back and reevaluate these things if you find that um, things have changed or assumptions have changed or maybe the equipment has changed. Also, once the, the entire machine has been evaluated, your PM tasks are basically these two columns. You're going to create PM work orders for each of these items on these frequencies. And these PM work orders will go into your existing CMMS or asset management system. Um, or if you don't have a computerized maintenance management system, they will go into a paper-based PM program. Uh, but I highly recommend looking into a CMMS if you don't have one already, because it gives you tools to go back and 
review the performance of your maintenance efforts in the future a lot more easily. But that's a topic for another video. This is just a short video to go over the importance of or the ability of a, the FMEA tool to be used to create preventive maintenance work orders for non-standard or customized equipment. Hope you found this useful and I will see you on the next video.